Hi, I'm Robert West. I'm Professor of Health Psychology here at UCL, and I'm in the Department of Behavioral Science and Health. I contribute to the course uh, that you're on, the MSc in Behavior Change, in a number of different ways, and I'll just give you a quick rundown of the sort of things I'm going to be covering in the course. So one of them is to do with motivation, and this is a big interest of mine. Why do we do what we do? What are the factors that drive our behavior? So we're going to cover uh, quite a bit about that. Um, and one of the key things I'm going to be looking at is how we can bring together all the different theories of motivation, the different viewpoints on motivation into a single framework that we can then use to help us to design our behavior change interventions. So for example, uh, a lot of the ways in which we try and influence each other's behavior is by changing the decisions that people make, the choices that they make. And we assume very often that if we can give them information, that this will help them to make choices that are going to be more adaptive. Now, I'm sure that many of you are, understand that uh, uh, that can help, that can certainly make a difference, but very, very often it isn't enough. So that decision-making process that we go through to arrive at a decision about what we should do doesn't always, by any means, turn into uh, a, a, a action in terms of what we actually do. So in understanding motivation, we have to see how should becomes want, or need and how need or want turns into the action itself and we're going to cover things like habit, we're going to uh, look at the way that emotions and drives uh, and our feelings uh, impact on our behaviours. So that's one of the areas that I want to cover. Uh, another area that I'm going to be looking at is uh, one of my main research areas and that's to do with um, smoking and health behaviour change. So smoking is coming down in prevalence in the UK, not so much in the world as a whole, but in certain countries and the UK is one of them. And the reason why smoking rates are coming down is because unusually for a uh, a, a government, uh, we see that uh, for the last 19 or 20 years, about 19 years actually, um, governments in the UK have been following what the evidence tells us actually makes a difference to smoking rates. Um, and uh, actually it ties in rather well with the talk that I do on motivation because and what we realise is what the evidence tells us about how you can reduce smoking rates um, is that you have to attack the behaviour across the broad front of influences on that behaviour, not just treating it as a choice, as a decision, but addressing the wants and needs that arise out of nicotine dependence and recognising the social, cultural and other factors that come into play in driving the behaviour. And so we're going to look at that and we're going to look at how our understanding of behaviour has contributed to getting smoking prevalence rates down in the UK from uh, around 25%, 26% down to about 15% now, which is uh, quite a remarkable shift and the, and the rates are still going down and they will carry, co they will carry on going down as long as uh, we continue to uh, put forward evidence-based policies. So those are a couple of things that we're going to be talking about and I hope that uh, we can have some fun uh, and that uh, in the course of uh, the sessions that I'm going to do and afterwards uh, we can really explore these issue, issues and, and address many of the questions that will very naturally arise in your heads as you're uh, learning more and more about how we can change behaviour and what underlies it. So um, uh, sorry again, I can't be with you right now, uh, but I look forward to seeing you all very soon.